Welcome to your third Getting Ready module. In this particular video, we'll be discussing multiplying decimals and fractions, creating ratios, and evaluating using function notation. Some of this we've covered already, but I'd like to go over it one more time just to make sure that everyone's on the same page. So let's begin with multiplying decimals. So when we're multiplying decimals, let's say we've got the decimal point 2, 0.02 times 0.5. Now when I'm multiplying these, I like to set these up in a vertical notation and multiply them. So I'm going to put in here, oops, excuse my pen, 0.02 times 0.5. And when you multiply things with decimals, you do all the multiplication, ignoring the decimal points, and then we'll pick them up at the end. So we'll multiply this as though the decimals weren't there. So I'll take 5 times 2 and get 10. So that's a 0. Carry the 1. And then 5 times 0 is 0, plus the 1, so we get a 1. And we're done. Nothing else to multiply here. And now we have to figure out where the decimal goes. So. What we do is we count the number of decimal places that we see. So we have one here, a second one here, and a third one here. So three different places after the decimal. So that means we should start the decimal here and move three places to the left. And again, excuse my pen. So one, two, three. So I'll need a leading zero here. And my decimal will go here. So the answer to this would be 0 0.01. And that should make sense since what we're doing is taking 50%. Remember, we can change this to percentages, and this would be 50%, which would be half of 0 0.02. Half of 0 0.02 would be 0 0.01. Let's try another example. Let's take 0.28. times 0.71. And again, I'm going to write this up using a vertical notation. Oops, times 0.71. And we'll multiply as though there are no decimal places here. So 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 2 is 2. Now we move on to multiplying the 7. 7 times 8 is 56. Carry the 5. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 5 is 19, and then remember we add down the columns, so we have an 8, 2 and 6 is 8, 9 and 0 is 9, and 1 and 0 is 1, and here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places, so I move 1, 2, 3, 4, put my decimal point there. So the answer to this one is point, point 0.1988. And let's try one more like that, just to make sure. So let's try point 0.25 times point 0.4. So again, I'll take 0.25 times 0.4. 4 times 5 is 20. So 0, carry the 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 2 is 10. And I move 3 decimal places over since there are 1, 2, 3 decimals. So 1, 2, 3. And I get 0.1. Okay, now let's move on to working with multiplying fractions. And we've done this a little bit before, but I just want to review it one more time. So again, when we're multiplying fractions, this is a little bit different than when we're adding fractions. So let's say I'm taking 3 fourths times 7 eighths. When I multiply fractions, unlike when I add fractions, I work with the numerator and denominator separately and I multiply them both. 
Remember when we're adding fractions, we have to work with a common denominator, and then we don't do anything with the denominators, we just work with the numerators. But in this case, this will become 3 times 7 over 4 times 8, or 21 over 32. written this incorrectly. So let me erase and try again. There we go, 21 over 32. Let's try just one more. 1 half times 5 eighths. So this would be 1 times 5 over 2 times 8, or 5 over 16. Now let's talk about creating ratios. Since we've been working with decimals and fractions, and ratios are just a form of a decimal or a fraction, but it's a little bit more in context. So we might want to create a ratio. Um, let's say we have 3 blue marbles and 10 red marbles and in statistics it's inevitable you'll work with marbles at some point so you've reached the point where you get to work with marbles so here we might want to know the ratio of red marbles to blue marbles. And what we're going to do is contrast this with the opposite ratio to show you how it differs. So if we want red to blue, this means that red would be in the numerator of the ratio, and blue would be in the denominator, so it would look like this the number of reds at the top, the number of blues at the bottom. So our ratio would be 10 over 3. Now this is different than if we ask for the ratio of blue to red. If I went blue to red, blue should go on top and red should go on the bottom. So that would be 3 over 10. And now what we can do with these as well is convert these into decimals by dividing. And I'll use a calculator to do this. So I'm going to take 10 divided by 3 and I come up with 3.33 as my ratio. And for this one, this would be 3 over 10, so I'll take 3 divided by 10 and this one comes up to 0.3 as the ratio. Now there's one last thing I want to remind you of, and it's something that we talked about in the last video, but I just want to go over it one more time to make sure everyone's on the same page, and that is function notation. So remember function notation, something like f of x, equals 3x plus 5. And remember, this is giving us a rule for what we do whenever we have a number that we want to plug in for x. So if I want to know something about x equals 1, I would plug a 1 in everywhere I see an x, so f of 1 would be equal to 3 times 1 plus 5, or 3 plus 5, which is 8. Or I could try this for x equals 0. So f of 0 would be 3 times 0 plus 5, which would be 0 plus 5, or 5. And let's do one more with this example. f of negative 1 would be 3 times negative 1 plus 5, which would be negative 3 plus 5, or 2. And let's try one more function, just to be sure. 
f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 2. And let's try this for both x equals 0 and x equals 3. So f of 0, and remember this doesn't have to be an f, it can be any letter, but in this case it's an f, so f of 0 would be 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 2, which would be 0 minus 0 plus 2, or just 2. And f of 3 would be 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 2, or 9 minus 12 plus 2. So here we have 9 minus 12 gives us negative 3 plus 2, or negative 1. Okay, so this concludes our video tutorial for um, the algebra concepts for this particular chapter. Go ahead and answer some of the getting ready questions and make sure that you have good understanding. And if you have any questions about this material, please email me or Angela.